You want honest talk about what Washington needs to do to get its fiscal house in order? There's no better person to talk to than our next guest. The always outspoken and insightful former Congressman Ron Paul joins us now on the phone. Dr. Paul, it's great to have you back on Money in Motion. Thank you. Nice to be with you. We, of course, are market watchers, and this is what the market is telling us. The S&P 500 and the Dow were marching up towards new highs here. The U.S. dollar is also getting stronger. Could, at the end of the day, the sequester be actually a good thing for the U.S. economy? Well, if they really had some cuts in there, it would be, but there aren't any cuts, so I wouldn't give that any credit. But, but you know, income is going down. There was a bad month in January. It had to do with the fact that the taxes went up. But, you know, the president's laying the groundwork for saying if there's any problems in the next year, it's all because of the sequester. But the whole thing is, is the sequester isn't there. I mean, it's just the fear tactics in order to raise taxes. That's what they're doing. If there's a crisis, uh, believe me, the Congress will spend the money. If it's financial or a war crisis, they'll spend. There'll be no hesitation. The Fed, the Fed spends $85 billion a month. And they're questioning this whole thing about this nickel and dime. But, you know, if, if the sequester goes through, uh, there, the proposed increase in spending in the next 10 years is $2.5 trillion. If it goes through, they're only going to spend $2.4 trillion in additional funds. It means nothing. Uh, the budget's going up automatically at about 7% per year. If it goes through, it'll go up at 6.9%. I'd like to challenge the people that think this is a big deal. Okay, you don't want any cuts. I won't cut anything. Let's just freeze the budget and give everybody what they had last year. See what they say then, because that, that to them, they wouldn't accept. But I'd say just have your budget the way you had it one year ago, then you can't complain that you had any cuts. Dr. Paul, it's Andy Bush here. We missed you this week with Bernanke testifying at Capitol <laughs> Hill. We would have loved to have had your insights then, but isn't this really a, a tempest in the teapot? The big battle is at the end of the month, I think, with the continuing resolution. What's your view on the shutdown, potential shutdown of the U.S. government over that spending fight? Well, I don't, th I don't think so. I think they're afraid of it. You know, there's a big argument goes on, and there's a pretense that one party wants to cut and the other one doesn't. But, you know, both parties are against cutting anything in the military budget. So they're, they're not going to shut down the government. That would be my opinion. Uh, and they're not going to really ever cut anything as long as this world and this and people accept dollars, which they continue to accept, they're going to keep printing the money. Bernanke is going to keep printing it at $85 billion a month. And, and, and until the conference is lost, that's what they're going to do. There's going to be no cuts. There's not going to be anything in move of cutting any budget or balancing the budget. There will be no move in that direction. So I don't believe for a minute they're going to close the government down for any time at all. Hey, hey, Dr. Paul, it's Brian Kelly. So I, I guess we're, what we're seeing then is just this massive disconnect between Wall Street and Washington. What's, what's the rational path, path forward? Uh, as somebody who, who was in Washington, it, is, that, is Washington's definition of rational path different than Wall Street's and Main Street's? Are we just seeing huge disconnects? You know, oh, there is, and I think Main Street, I don't want to say too much against Wall Street, but I think Main Street has a pretty good feel about this. Wall Street certainly, from my opinion, has a good feel about it on the short run. They know what markets do on the short run, and they know that this is not a calamity. I think the, uh, I think the grassroots, though, Main Street knows that on the long run, this is a disaster. And I think this is why a lot of young people are interested in what I'm saying, is because they're inheriting this mess, and they know what it means on the long run. But the people on Wall Street are short-term pretty good at figuring this out, and I think they have it correct. This is not a financial disaster. But I think that the long-term process of spending huge deficits, not cutting anything and printing up money, mm -hmm. is a disaster, and there's a lot of people who are starting to understand that. Dr. Paul, it's always great to speak with you. Thank you for your time. Thanks for having me. Ron Paul. All right, so we got to get back to currency. So is this why we've seen the dollar move higher a little bit? I personally don't uh, believe okay. so. I believe that it's all due to risk aversion. Obviously, the dollar uh, has a strong correlation with risk aversion being a safe haven currency. And so I think the happenings in Italy and the happenings of the sequester are pushing dollar higher. Wow, a comedian in office and the sequester. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> it doesn't get any better. That's why we trade currencies. Who would have thunk? All right, coming up next, it is time to profit from the payrolls. We will tell you what to watch out for next week when the jobs report comes out and how to trade it. Stick with us.